Okay, so a couple days ago, Corey Promen graded every team on their draft, and now I've already done this, but today I'm going to be reacting to his grades, see how they compare to mine, and uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. Canadians, A+. Plus. I disagree. Now, Promen did have Slavkovsky ranked uh, first overall, I believe, so... That would make sense that he'd like to draft more than I would. Originally, I did give them a B minus. I do think that was a bit harsh. I'd probably give him just a straight B at this point. But overall, I still think passing on uh passing on right is not a move I would have made. Um other than that though, Lane Hudson was a great pick. Beck and Mashar are fine. I don't Love those picks in general, but they're solid picks. Uh, they're definitely NHL players, so you're getting four NHL players out of the draft. Um, the only reason I, I guess I don't have them, I wouldn't grade them quite that high is just because one, passing on right, and two, you know, if if you get four NHL players out of any draft, that's like a great draft class. But you do have to consider the assets they had available going into the draft. Uh, so it's not that surprising that they're going to get four NHL players to come out of this draft. I mean, Hudson is a bit risky. He might not make it, but I think he will. Overall, though, A-plus is a bit generous, I think, but I would give him a solid B. Next, he has the Kraken with an A, and I, uh, I completely agree. I think the Kraken arguably had the best draft out of any team, all things considering. Getting Shane Wright at fourth was just an absolute windfall for them uh in addition to that they got Fergus at 35 one of my favorite players in the draft I had him at uh I had him at 11 Yanni Nyman is fine um and they got a lot of they had a lot of picks too a lot of late rounders that you never know and they got made a lot of good picks if I remember correctly I think they got David Goyette as well um well, yet it doesn't. They don't have all of their. He doesn't have all of their picks here in this little blurb about them. It might not have been Goyet. It might have been somebody else who I like a similar amount. But overall, I thought they just made really, really smart picks. So an A is totally reasonable there. Next, he has the Coyotes at an A minus, and I straight up just disagree with that. Uh, he says that they arguably had the most upside in the draft with Logan Cooley. That's true. I could agree with that. After they, after that, uh, went to work adding a lot of big guys, complaint system. I can debate whether I've taken Lamaru or Duda at thirty six and twenty nine respectively. Yeah, those picks. I I think those are bad picks. So, first of all, trading up to eleven, getting rid of or giving up a late first and two seconds to do so to draft Connor Geeky. Hate that move. I don't like Gonor Geeky that much. Yes, he would have gone in that range if they didn't move up. He would not have been available at 27. But if you're moving up to draft a guy, it's got to be a guy that has higher upside than Gonor Geeky, in my opinion. Lamru at 29 as well is a terrible pick, I think. Arguably, not even arguably. Well, I guess it is arguably, but... <laughs> Worst pick of the draft, in my opinion. I think a lot of people would agree with that. That's just a huge reach for me. I he's not that he's just he's not that good. Due to at thirty six is also fairly questionable. I think. And who else did they even get? I think uh, Julian Lutz. They got at like forty three or something. That's a decent pick. But overall, you're basically coming away from this draft with uh, Cooley, Geeky. Is an interesting one. Lutz is a solid prospect, I think, and everybody else is questionable. Geeky is also pretty questionable. He will play in the NHL, but at what role? Uh, I think there. I think people are expecting more from Geeky than he's capable of at this point. Overall, I really don't like their moves. The trade, the trade up, I didn't like, and I don't really like trading up in general. But that partic that one in particular, I thought was really bad. Uh, the Lamaru pick is also really, really bad. I just, I wouldn't give them an, I wouldn't even consider giving them an A or a B. I don't remember exactly what I gave them, but I'm pretty sure I gave them like a D or a D plus maybe. 
Um, but yeah, considering the picks that they had coming into the draft, I I don't think they did very well for themselves. Next, we got the Buffalo Sabres with an A-, and this is another one that I, well, it's not another one. It's one that I like. I liked their draft quite a lot. Uh, Tobias Leninen was a bit of an interesting pick, uh, potentially a, a reach. They also got Savoy, uh, Noah Ostland, and I can't remember who their third first round pick was, but I'm pretty confident it was another guy that I like. Um, let's see. Yeah, it doesn't say here, but I'm I in general I liked their their draft a lot. I'd probably give him an A minus as well. Next, we have the Columbus Blue Jackets here, also with an A minus. So clearly, he just did this in rank in uh, in order from highest grade to lowest grade. That's fine. Um, they got Yurchek and Matejchuk. Yurchek I like a lot. He was my favorite defenseman. Uh, Matejchuk is risky, and they got him at twelve, which I think is high. I think that was high to take Matejchuk. Was it 12? Yeah, it was 12, right? Um, anyways, I if he hits, he hits. But I'm worried that he's not going to. Generally speaking, I don't love that pick. Luca Del Bo Blues, I'm also not a huge fan of. Um, overall, I'd probably give him a B or a B-. minus. I thought they had a fine draft, uh, especially with Juracek. But the rest of their guys... Uh, they def they definitely have have some upside here. It could it could be a uh some these guys could develop into something really special for them. But really, the main guy that this that their draft hinges on for me is Matejchuk. If he hits, it'll be a great class. But I'm not I'm not convinced. Next, he's got the Ducks with a B plus, uh, Mintyukov and Gaucher. Uh, Mintyukov I like a lot more than Gaucher, but where they got him I think is fine. Uh, they also got Warren and Luno. Warren I like a lot as a defensive defenseman. Luno I don't really care for that much. Overall though, I thought, again, they had a very solid draft class, so B plus for them is pretty reasonable. Next we got the Blackhawks with a B plus. The weird thing, well... I guess it's weird. It's it's just a thing, really. Uh, with Chicago, is the trades they made. Uh, trading out Doc and Debrinket, I thought... Like, if you want to go in a rebuilding direction, then yeah, obviously you want to trade those guys. But the return they got for them was kind of questionable. I didn't like those trades, really. Um, however, actually looking at the picks they made, they got uh, Korchinski and Nazar. Two players that I like a lot. Those those are great, great pickups. Uh, who else do they get? Uh, Sam Renzel, a guy I haven't seen too much of, so I can't comment too much on it. Uh, pretty much in the range he was expected to go in. Draft uh, high school players are kind of wild cards in general, but given that that was their third first, uh, they went for a guy with upside, and I kind of like it. Overall, B+, plus, I think is pretty solid. Uh, they had a very solid draft. So I I give them a B or a B plus that's that's fair, but again those trades kind of questionable. Let's see next we have the Minnesota Wild here with the B plus, and yeah their most significant picks are Yurov and Ogren here. Yurov is interesting. Honestly, I'm so conflicted on Yurov. I've gone back and forth on him and exactly how I feel about him all season, but. Being a Russian player, getting him at 24th, I think, is good value. But at the same time, he doesn't really feel like a player I would have gone for there. Uh, I had Grudinin and um, Trikazov ranked higher, so if they wanted to take a bit of a risk on a Russian player, I would have gone for one of those guys. Although drafting either of them at 24 would have been quite high. So. I don't know. I think a B is fair. B plus, a bit high. Ogren as well. I don't think has a ton of upside, but is a reasonably safe pick. Next, we got the Devils with a B plus here. Uh, their most significant pick, obviously, was Simone Nemetz. And drafting him second overall when Wright was available, 
I still would have gone right. I believe in drafting best player available anywhere in the draft, but especially when it's second overall. And I think Wright was the best player available. Nemets, though, really boosts that decor. <clears throat> now, they already have Dougie Hamilton and... Um, oh my gosh, who's their other offensive defenseman? Damon Severson. There we go, geez. So they got good young defensemen already, but Nemets coming up <clears throat> really boosts their defense further. Uh, either way, I mean, they are kind of set on forwards... Uh, I don't really have a strong opinion about their draft. Again, I would have taken Wright, but Nemetz is fine. I Actually, I would have taken Yurtek over Nemetz, though, because uh, he was available. So, I don't know. A, again, another team I probably would have given like a B, maybe maybe even a B-. minus, Because I feel like they didn't make a ton of other super impactful trades. Seamus Casey could be a guy who... Uh, Becomes a solid offensive guy at the NHL level, but I'm not sold on him. I did have him ranked reasonably high. I had him uh, at the top of my second round, I believe. But I don't know. He's got to improve his skating. Next, we got the Jets shot at B plus, and really the 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 pick for them is Lambert. I mean, they got McGrory at 14, but Lambert is the main guy for them. I loved that pick. Could be one of the steals of the draft. They also got Elias Salomonson and Danny Zilkin, who uh, could be pretty solid uh, NHL players. Not sure exactly how much upside is there for either of them, but if you're again, if you're getting four NHL players out of any draft class, that's pretty elite, and they have a very solid chance at uh, get, doing that with these four guys. So B plus for the Jets, I think, is a little bit stingy. I don't remember exactly what grade I gave them originally, but again, I would. I'd probably give him an A or an A minus. And here we go. Carolina with a B. That's that's not good enough. They got uh they got Trikazov, especially considering their first pick of the draft was 60th overall, and they took and they got Trikazov and Paravalov and Grudinin, who uh Promen doesn't even mention here, does not mention Grudinin at all. That's a crime. Uh I had him ranked 10th on my board. Uh, they also got Cruz Lucius, which could be a player. Paravalov could be a player. Um, yeah, I, I I liked their draft a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. I would have given them an A, for sure. Let's see. Next, we have Dallas with a B. Uh, their main picks were Leon Bichel uh, and Christian Cairo. And... I like those guys. I like Cairo a lot at 50. I thought that was a great pick. Michelle, I thought at 18 was a bit high for him, but they need defensive prospects. So sure, he's big, so he uh, likely would have gone uh, not too far after that. Another team would have would have grabbed him. So I think somebody was probably going to reach on him a little bit because I think 18 was high. I, I mean, 20 would have been a little high too as well, 22. I don't know. Uh, he's big and he's a good skater. So overall, pretty solid pick, I think. George Figaris, I don't have uh, too much to say about. But uh, yeah, I think they got a couple of solid defensive prospects. And a grade of B is pretty fair. They also did get Matthew Semenoff late in the draft, though. And he's really solid, just a really bad skater. So if he can seriously improve his skating, he could become one of the steals of the draft. And so he's gonna be the guy for me that kind of makes or breaks this draft class i mean they did sod already but if Semenov develops well and could uh, improve his skating and develop into a, like a top six forward which is definitely possible um this draft class could be seriously seriously good for dallas next we got uh detroit here also at a b casper i don't really care for that much he's fine Drafting him 8th overall, I think, is is quite a bit high for him. I would have felt comfortable taking him maybe starting around 12, 13. Butchel Nikov, I thought, was a random reach. Definitely not a guy I would have taken at 52, again, when players like Trikazov and Grubdinen were available there. So, overall, I, I remember when I was grading them originally, I kind of wanted to give him a D 
or mate or like a d plus i ended up giving him a c i believe but really i did not care for the red wings draft in general although it is iserman so you never know, you never know i mean you do kind of know like his his drafting record is pretty solid so i'll give him the benefit of the doubt but i still don't really care for their draft next we have the predators here with a grade of a b now basically they had one really meaningful pick at 17 and they took Joachim Kamel which I think is pretty good value there I had him ranked at 13th or 14th on my board so solid value after that they didn't really have too much else Kasper Kulanumi I think is an interesting player uh could make the NHL could be a decent player other than that though there isn't really too much to say about them so a good B I think is fine Next, you have the Flyers, also with a B. And their main pick, of course, was Cutter Gauthier, fifth overall. Not a pick I like. Uh, I don't like Gauthier that much. He says here his potential is massive. I kind of disagree. I don't, I don't think he has a ton of upside. Um, he'll be a very solid NHL player, sure, but I don't think... Um, like my general philosophy is upside and skill over everything else, pretty much. And Gauche was not a guy to me that struck me as being uh, a fifth overall talent in terms of upside. So I don't know. He also mentions here Devin Kaplan. Sure, so, so that was a solid pick, but I think a B is fair. Uh, they could have done better with the fifth overall pick, although. When you're picking that high, I feel like you gotta kind of uh, take the right player. So I don't know. Maybe a B is a little generous. Maybe I would have given him a B minus. Uh, but yeah. Next he has San Jose with a B as well, and this was interesting. I pretty sure I gave them a D plus. They are my favorite team, so I'm biased. But you would think I would be uh biased in their favor not against them but i can be critical especially since i'm kind of a draft nerd and this is my favorite team i want them to do well especially considering this is the last draft that the sharks are going to make with uh doug wilson jr as the head of scouting and he has done a really really good job in that role but by at 27 i thought was a bit of a reach lund at uh 34 I thought was a bit of a reach, especially considering Fergus went one pick afterwards. And again, Lambert went 30. They could have got him at 27. Although I will say this about uh, Cameron Lund. The Sharks just had their uh, prospect scrimmage tournament. It was uh, seven games. uh, Seven, eight-minute, three-on-three games, basically, that they played today. And Cameron Lund absolutely popped off. He had like five goals plus a shootout goal and a post or two posts like he clearly showed off that he can shoot uh he can definitely he can definitely score and like three of his goals were absolutely disgusting bar and snipes um so maybe there's a decent uh goal scorer there with cameron lund the best pick of the draft i thought for the sharks was uh matthias havlid at 45 and considering that they uh, turned pick 11 into 27, 34, and 45 in general also is pretty solid. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I still don't like the draft that much for them. I think I was a bit too harsh on them, though, uh, initially. So perhaps perhaps I'll, I'll bump their grade up to like a a c a solid c maybe maybe a c plus i don't know well to be honest cameron lund the seeing cameron lund play today in, in the prospects tournament really kind of got my hopes up a little bit i didn't see that from him granted i only saw like two of his games this year but uh yeah he looks good so i don't know i still think a b is a bit is a bit high for for the sharks all right, next we got the Blues also with a B. I suspect there's going to be a lot of teams here with Bs. Um, Snuggerud, not a guy that I really care for that much. Kaskamaki is is a decent guy. Uh, I like him, especially considering where they got him. But other than that, like none of these other guys 
are really that relevant. They, hadn't, they didn't have a lot of picks in general. So a B for the Blues, like, sure. At this point, I feel like we're kind of just being a little bit lazy with the grading. I think, I, I mean, I think I gave him a B initially as well. It's it's just, it's kind of hard to grade a team when they don't have that many picks um, or that many high picks is for sure. Uh, yeah, I probably would have given like a C plus to a B. Like that's, that's fine. Next we got Vancouver. Uh, let's see. They got LeCarre Mackey, which is a player I like. Uh, let's see. They would have got him at 12th over 15, 15th overall. Um, that's decent value for LeCarre Mackey. I think Elias Pedersen, I think is decent. Uh, should be a player that makes the uh, the NHL, I think. At least he has a good shot at it anyways. Overall, like you're, you're really getting one solid player, I think, in Vancouver with LeCarrie Mackey. And again, it, it's it's fine. It's a good pick. Uh, it's def There's definitely a lot of other players they could have taken at 15 that would have been significantly worse picks. Um, so yeah, Vancouver... B, sure, why not? Next, we got the the caps here, also with a B. It looks like we're finally starting to get out of the B range, though. Uh, Ryan Chesley is not a player that I like that much. Ivan Miroshnichenko, though, is a player that I like quite a bit. I believe they got him at 20, which is pretty much right where I had him ranked. And But he's a player with a lot of upside. He potentially could have had the upside to be a top 10 pick if it wasn't for cancer diagnosis and the russian factor i this is i have no like reason no reasoning to support this hunch that i have about the capitals though and that is i think the caps might have a little bit of an easier time getting russian players over with ovechkin just because you know ovechkin seems to kind of have connections so maybe maybe that could help him out there a little bit with miros nachenko um but either way, I think he's a he's a very solid player. They drafted him in a good spot to take him, I think. And honestly, probably would have given him like a B plus, maybe. I don't know. Again, they didn't have that many picks and being a good team, like you're going to be drafting later in the draft. But Maroshnichenko kind of reminds me a little bit of when the Sharks drafted Ryan Merkley because they got him at like 19 or 22 or something. So a similar spot in the draft where I really feel like they've a pretty solid playoff team here is getting a guy with way more talent than they normally would be able to get at that point in the draft because of other factors. So overall, I think the Caps had a pretty solid draft. Next, we have the Kings here, and Corey gave him a B-. Uh, they didn't have a first-round pick, so 51 was their first pick, and they drafted Jack Hughes there, I think. Uh, that's fine. Like Jack Hughes is a solid uh depth guy probably a bottom six uh grinder type player i do like him a bit uh at 51 i think that's fine fine value there were definitely players with more upside available they could have taken a guy like gleb trikazov here but yeah i mean it's kind of tough giving him a b minus based off of how many picks they had like they didn't have that many picks to make in general so they already have a stacked prospect pool, though, so I think kind of trading those picks to make the moves that they did is a good idea. They're a team that doesn't really need to be adding too much to the prospect pool at this point, and they can definitely start really going for uh, deeper playoff runs. I mean, they made the playoffs this year, which is a bit of a surprise to a lot of people, and I think they're going to stay in the playoffs. I think they're going to start making the playoffs pretty consistently here. So really, for the Kings, I don't think their draft mattered that much. Next, you have the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is another team that really didn't have that many picks to begin with. Uh, the most notable picks for me were Fraser Minton and Nick Moldenhauer. Uh, you have a decent chance at at least getting one NHL player out of those two guys. Probably Minton, uh, but Moldenhauer has a decent chance to 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 play as well. Again, in a depth role, most likely. So, B minus for them, I think, is fine. Now we got the uh, the New York Rangers here. Also with a B minus, uh, getting Adam Sikra, a player that I like a lot. Uh, Bryce McConnell Barker, not a player that I like that much. I am gonna double check here really quick uh, what other picks they made because I feel like 
And they made some other picks that I actually did like. Uh, maybe not. No Aliba. Maxime Barbashev. Yeah, that's about it, actually. So Barbashev could be an interesting one. If he turns anything close to his brother, that'll be a very solid pick there at 161st overall. But yeah, again, another team that didn't have a lot of picks, so B- minus is fine, I guess. Oilers with a C+. Uh, Promen really loves Reed Schaefer, apparently. Thinks he can come a middle lineup at winger. Uh, I don't know. I thought there were a lot better players available on the board at 32nd overall. Or was it 32nd? Yeah. Pretty sure they had that pick. Either way, I really think there were better players available where they took Schaefer. He is a uh, Edmonton kid, though, I think, is why they drafted him, apparently, or something. I didn't love that pick, and they didn't really have any other picks after that, so I didn't really like their draft that much. I'd probably give him, like, a C-. minus. Next, you have Pittsburgh here, also with a C+. Plus. Uh, only one pick in their first three rounds, and they took Owen Pickering. Pickering is a player that I like a lot, though. I think he'll be a solid contributor. So if you don't have that many picks, you kind of have to make the most out of them. And I think they did well with Pickering. Uh, a reasonable mix of upside and like security with him, it's boosting their the that um, prospect pool on defense. And I don't really think they have many prospects on defense at all. I feel like they have some guy named Patterson who played a decent amount this year who might be considered a prospect uh but yeah their their prospect pool in general kind of needs some work obviously when you're been as good as they have for as long as they have you're not going to have a ton of solid prospects but I think they did they did fine I guess again I'd probably just give them a C because they really only had the one meaningful pick Tampa Bay Lightning here though as a C plus is interesting Isaac Howard uh, they got at 31st overall, and I thought he was a great pick. Definitely the guy I would have taken at 31. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe I would have taken Fergus, but I like Isaac Howard a lot too. So even if he's the only real player that comes out of this draft class, I think he'll be a solid top six player for them in, in the future, you know, three or four years from now. So honestly, I'd probably give him like a B. Now we have the Islanders here at... Uh, another team, well, actually, they're the first team here to get a straight-up C from Pronman. And they ended up with Cali Odelius and Isaiah George. Those are the two uh, main guys for me. Uh, Pronman has them listed here as well, in addition to Quinn Finley. Quinn Finley is not a player I know as much about, but Odelius, I think, has... Uh, Pretty high upside, actually. And George is a, just a solid defensive defenseman. Could be a very solid shutdown guy for you at the NHL level. So I think they did. I think they did okay, actually. I'd probably give them a B as well. Next, we have the Ottawa Senators here with a C. Um, I don't really remember liking their draft that much. Philip Norberg, they got. Uh, at 64, and Promen says that was quite high for him, and I I agree. Uh, I didn't like the the uh, the Nordberg pick, and that was their first pick of the draft. Yeah, so Oscar Pedersen, don't really know too much about him actually. Uh, yeah, they had a lot of late round picks, um, but generally speaking, I guess they did fine. Like a C, sure. At uh, at 64, though, they could have gotten... I mean, at some point, they could have taken a swing on a guy like Vladimir Gurdinin. So all these teams that have all these late-round picks, like, do you really want to punish them for not punting? Or not, it's not to punt, reaching for Gurdinin? Not really. It seems like teams were really low on him in general. But at the same time, like, he's really, he's really, really good. So, I don't know. I don't know. I guess a C is fine. Vegas obviously didn't have that many meaningful picks. Sapovalov is fine, I guess. Jordan Gustafson, sure. See, I don't think Vegas is really going to get anybody that's super impactful out of this draft. And really any team that doesn't have a first round pick, unlikely to get anybody super significant out of this draft. 
uh, or at least like a high second. Because, I mean, Seattle at 35, of course, got Furcus, who I think is going to be one of the best players to come out of this draft. So we will see. We will see. Next, we have a few teams here that have uh, C minuses. So the Bruins, the Flames, and the Panthers all as well. Uh, there's a common theme here. Like these teams didn't have any draft picks, I don't think. They definitely didn't have any early picks. Uh, yeah. Matthew Poitras was Boston's first pick at 117. Not somebody I really care for that much. Again, spot you could have taken Grudinen. I know I'm going to mention Grudinen like a million times in this video. Take a shot every time I say Grudinen. Uh, and in case you aren't drunk yet, I'll just give you another Grudin in there for you. I, um, I do not condone um, drinking heavily. I mean, you want to have a drink? Oh man, where am I going? <laughs> where where am I going with this video? I don't know. Uh, Calgary. Who did who did Calgary get? Actually, I don't remember. Let's see. This video is gonna be fun to edit. Calgary. What the hell? Here we go. Yeah. Okay, so the Flames only had three picks. Uh, kind of unlikely to really get anybody significant out of there. Toppy Ronnie at 59, I guess. Maybe. Panthers, I don't really think got anybody interesting. Except, if I remember correctly, they drafted... Um, they drafted somebody in the seventh round there, like Jack Devine, is that right? Yes, Jack Devine, 221st overall. That's very solid value there, because I think he could be a solid bottom six guy uh, and has a decent chance of actually playing that role. So Panthers, C-, minus. yeah, I guess. I mean, I'd probably give him a C just because of the Devine pick alone. Anytime you have a seventh rounder that has a legit chance of making the NHL, I think that's a... That's just so much value there that you're getting out of an asset that really doesn't have much value. So that's good asset management in general, at least for the Florida Panthers. And then finally, we got Colorado Avalanche with a D here. The only team he gave a D, which I feel like that is also indicative of some of the laziness that's going on in this uh, grading. Because if you're only giving one team a D, like you got to grade on the curve. Because you can't have like... 31 teams say yeah like they did fine and then one team did poorly because realistically that's not really likely uh, especially considering some of the guys in this draft class that went undrafted the amount of teams that pass on Grudin in multiple times Trikazov going 60 as well like some of these teams definitely could have done a lot better and some of them definitely deserved to be graded uh lower than they were and then the Avalanche giving a D, I don't really think is fair because they only had two picks, a sixth and a seventh. Uh, they drafted a goalie in the seventh round, I believe. So last pick of the draft. You never know with a goalie. Could could be something. Uh, unlikely, but if they get one player out of this draft class, that'd be pretty amazing for Colorado. But even then, just grading them lower just because they only had two picks is not really fair. I actually gave him a no grade. Uh, just because I didn't feel like there was enough to there to even grade them on. But some of these teams, you know, like San Jose, again, I still think should be graded lower. Uh, Ottawa probably could have been graded a bit lower. Lightning actually could have been graded higher. I mean, I do disagree with some of these, you know. Um, yeah, that, that, that will be about it, though, I think, for this video. That's enough of me rambling about the... Uh, draft grades here if you did like this video please do give it a like uh it really helps me out a lot i greatly appreciate it uh leave a comment let me know what you think about how some of these teams did in the draft i will leave my own grading uh on screen now for you guys to click on so if you want to watch that if you haven't seen it yet um give you a chance to uh see how consistent i am with my own grading although of course i have changed my mind on a number of these teams uh but yeah if you want to watch that video great if not don't click on it um but uh in any case where do you guys have a nice day